this problem, we have a ball with a mass of four kilograms that's hanging at rest in equilibrium from two ropes. One rope, it's functioned in that rope, T1, is pulling perfectly horizontal. The other rope, potential rope called T2, is pulling at an angle. The angle that the rope makes with the ceiling is 35 degrees. We're going to calculate the tension in those two ropes. The first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate the weight of this hanging ball. Because we're going to be looking at forces, we need to find the force of gravity acting on this ball. Because we're given the mass, we have to calculate the force of gravity or the weight of the ball. If we were already given the weight in newtons, we would just use that value. But here, since we're given the mass in kilograms, we need to calculate its weight. So we do that by finding the force of gravity pulling on the ball. The force of gravity is the mass of the object 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Which is 39.2 newtons. Thus, of course, gravity is pulling down in this ball. That's being balanced out by this rope here pulling up on the ball with a force of 39.2 newtons. But a rope pulls on both ends, so that means that this vertical rope is pulling down on this knot with a force of 39.2 newtons as well. Now what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the tension T1 that's pulling to the left. And we're going to be looking at the tension T2, which is pulling up at an angle. So to do this, I'm going to draw a free body diagram. I'm going to draw a drawing of all of the forces acting on an object. And what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at all of the forces acting on this knot. Where these three ropes are tied together. So one force is 39.2 newtons that's pulling straight down. Another force is this tension T1 that's pulling perfectly horizontal. And the third force that we have acting is the rope T2. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to break T2 into components. So this angle that T2 makes with the ceiling is 35 degrees. T2 has a component that's pulling up, and it has a component that's pulling to the right. We call this T2x. We call this T2. In the vertical direction, the forces must add up to equal zero because this is in equilibrium. So that means that T2y must equal 39.2 newtons. The only thing pulling straight up is T2y. The only thing pulling straight down is 39.2 newtons. It's this force of the rope, which is really the weight of this ball. And those two have to balance each other. From this, we can figure out what T2 is. Redrawing T2 by itself. So we know the side opposite the 35 degree angle, and T2 is the hypotenuse. So if we look at the sine of 35 degrees, 
Sine of 35 degrees is defined as the opposite side, 39.2 meters, divided by the hypotenuse, T2. And so then to solve this, we multiply both sides by T2. And then we divide both sides by the sine of 35 degrees. get that T2 is 39.2 divided by the sine of 35 degrees, which is 68.343 meters. So looking back at our free body diagram, we also know that the net force in the vertical direction, or in the horizontal direction, must be zero. That means that T1 pulling to the left must equal T2x pulling to the right. So if we can find T2x, then we know what T1 is. So looking at this diagram, T2x is the other side in that triangle. So at this point, we know opposite side to the 35 degree angle. We also know that this hypotenuse is 68.34. So we can use either the cosine of 35 degrees or we can use the tangent of 35 degrees to find T2x. If I use the cosine of 35 degrees, that's going to equal the adjacent side, T2x, over the hypotenuse, 68.343 newtons. Or we get that T2x is 68.343 times the cosine of 35 degrees which means that T2x is 55.983 meters. But T2x also equal T1. So that's our final answer. And in these problems, all we're doing is we're looking at the forces to make sure that the forces add up to equal zero. We're making sure that the forces in the x direction add up to equal zero. We're making sure that the forces in the y direction add up to equal zero. And once we figure out which one of the forces we know, then it's just a matter of using trigonometry to find all the other values.